Hi there. Welcome to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I'm your host, Karen Fabian, and this is episode 322. We are just plowing through into the mid 300s. Um, I am recording this on November 7th, 2024, and this will go live on November 11th, 2024. And I want to start out by just framing this a little differently than some of my past episodes, because I've created a new format for at least the next handful of episodes, and I'm going to be testing it out, and I'd love to know what you think of it. So send me a DM on Instagram right after you listen to this episode and give me some of your thoughts on the format. My Instagram handle is bare bones yoga. We're going to start out with a specific focus on what you are going to get out of this episode. I don't know about you, but sometimes I listen to a particular podcast episode and I'm 10 minutes in and I just bail. And even after reading the summary, thinking it might be interesting, once I get into it, I know it's not for me. So I want to make sure because I value your time and your time is valuable that you have an idea because you pressed play on this episode to know what you're going to get out of it. So I'm going to start out by telling you that. And then I'll go into the actual lesson for today's episode. And if you've been a listener for a while, you know that some of my episodes have guests and some of my episodes have uh, just me. And so this will be the format for my solo episodes. When I have a guest, the format will be more of just my conversation with the guest. And so after I share the message with you, this is what I think is the really cool part. I'm going to give you an action step based on what I taught in the lesson so that you have something actionable you can do as a result of listening to this episode that you can experiment with in your classes, all designed to help you feel more confident, feel more empowered, feel more authentic when you teach. And so every time you press play, on my show, you are not only going to learn something, you're going to hear what you're going to learn before you learn it. And then you're going to get an action plan, an action step, a really simple one, two, maybe three things tops to do so that you can take what you learned and put it into action and hopefully start to see the results that you want to see. Now, the other piece of this is that will really help the wheels be in motion in a really smooth and and fruitful way for you is if you give me your thoughts on how things are going. If you experimented with the action step I give you, send me a note on Instagram, send me a DM, bare bones yoga, and let me know. So the more I hear from you about how things are going with the action step that I gave you, the better it will be because I'll be able to refine future episodes, what I share, and I'll even be able to share your successes. And that will be really inspiring, not just for me to hear, but also other yoga teachers who listen to the show. So with that, we're going to go into this episode and I'm going to start out with what you are going to get out of this. So in this episode, I'm going to make it easy for you to be a confident yoga teacher by peeling back a really simple six step plan of exactly what you need to do. So this episode is going to give you that six step plan and you might be listening to this episode or you might be watching this episode on YouTube. I do post most of my solo episodes at this point, if not all, on my YouTube channel. And you can get to my YouTube channel if you're not familiar with it by going to my website, barebonesyoga.com. And in the drop down, you'll see the link to the YouTube. Otherwise, you might just be listening to it, which is totally fine. These episodes I do that I record the video on work both ways. So you don't have to watch them. But I just decided it'd be kind of fun to add that as another feature. 
So that's what you're going to get out of this episode. So if you're home and you're taking notes, this would definitely be an episode where I would highly recommend you take notes because I'm going to give you the six step plan to help you build your confidence as a yoga teacher. So step number one is based on a concept that I teach in my program. And I share this in social media clips as well. And it's this motto that I've designed. And this is how it goes. Your confidence as a teacher is not found in the hours that you train. And I know that might run counter to what you've been told because the whole yoga industry is built on this idea that you get your 200 hour training, then your 300 and your 500. And yoga teachers have intertwined the concept of getting more hours with feeling more confident. And I'm here to tell you, there is, the, there is no causal relationship there. If you get more hours of training, you may feel more confident and you may not. So what that means is it doesn't always lead to the outcome that you want. And I would say for the most part, when yoga teachers enroll in a 300 or a 500 hour, at some level, they're looking to feel more confident. They may also be looking to get a specific skill. And intertwined with that is I want to feel more confident teaching that specific skill or to that specific audience for which I think I need to take this specific training. So I'm not here to bash 300 or 500 hour trainings. It's a wonderful um, training tool to use. There are wonderful teachers teaching it. It's great that as a yoga teacher, you have that as a resource to you. What I am simply bringing forth is this idea that your confidence as a yoga teacher is not necessarily found in the hours of training that you get. And so what does this actually mean? Well, number one, it means that if you took your 200 hour training and you don't feel confident and you're teaching weekly classes right now, you don't necessarily need to take a 300 or a 500 to build your confidence. Matter of fact, if you stick with me through the rest of this episode, I'm going to give you a recipe that I've used over and over again that will help you build your confidence. No extensive hours required. So that's the first thing uh, that I wanted to do, sort of a myth-busting beginning to this conversation. So that's the first piece of the six-step lesson. Number two, this is really the, the true motto that I share with teachers over and over again, especially when I'm working with them inside my signature program. When you teach from what you know, your confidence grows. I'll say that again. When you teach from what you know, your confidence grows. And this is definitely something that you'll hear me say if you've watched any of my videos on TikTok and Instagram. And I want to just remind you that if you're not on my Instagram in particular, get on there because I'm going on to Instagram Live every day of the week and doing workshops. I've talked about this before. I've got this free resource for you where you can get high level training from me for free simply by going to my Instagram and watching those videos. Hopefully you'll see when I go live and you can be with me live and you can ask some questions live. Otherwise you can watch the replay. So the idea here is when you teach from what you know, your confidence is going to grow. And the alternate is you're going in the room and you're teaching simply what you were told to say. You're teaching from a script. You're teaching from repeating the same things over and over again. This does not lead to confidence and no amount of hours is going to fix that mindset. What we want to do is start to appreciate where the confidence is coming from. The confidence is coming from you speaking from what you actually truly know from things that you know about movement, about cues, about the pose, about the sequence, that's in large part where your confidence is going to come from. 
So you don't necessarily need 500 hours of training to do that. In fact, I'll give you one sneak preview. One of the best strategies you can use to teach from what you know, especially if you've been teaching less than a year, is to simply use action cues. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that for now. At the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a way to get more on that, more on my queuing strategy. That's part of my program. Number three, this is really where the rubber meets the road. I'm going to give you the full easy recipe or blueprint to confident teaching. So if you can write this down, you're definitely going to want to write this down. Heads up. So number one is take and finish and graduate from a 200 hour teacher training. There's no doubt that that is the industry standard for anyone who wants to teach yoga. It is basically a requirement at this point in time for anyone who wants to teach in a studio and even in other non-studio settings like gyms and fitness centers, they typically know enough about the yoga industry to ask that their teachers have a 200 level training. So take and graduate from that. And I'll also just say related to this, I speak to a good number of teachers who have taken a 200 hour, but haven't graduated because the graduation requirement is that they create a certain number of sequences. And when I talk to them, they'll say, oh, I haven't graduated yet because I have to create a whole bunch of sequences and send in videos for each one. And I don't know how to do it. Or I just can't seem to figure out how to do that. And this is a real problem. If you went through a 200 hour teacher training and you get to the end and you have a graduation requirement that you can't fulfill and you just languish and just let that sit and never graduate, you've wasted your time and you've wasted your money. So what I'm going to say on this is that even though I don't typically work with people who haven't yet graduated from a 200 hour, if this is you please send me a DM on Instagram and I'm going to help you with a way to complete this graduation task so that you can get your certificate and enroll or sign up on the Yoga Alliance website as a registered yoga teacher. I want you to be able to get through your 200 hour and I don't want the sequencing part to be the hump you can't get over. So number one, finish your 200 hour. Number two, Create your signature sequence. This is new languaging I'm using for a concept that I've been teaching for years. I've just created new languaging around it by calling it a signature sequence. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is one of the keys to, to successful, confident teaching. I want you to really hear me on this. And I know because I speak to many yoga teachers who listen to this show, Teachers, in fact, who have taken my program, enrolled in and completed my yoga anatomy blueprint learning program. And when I talk to them, and if this is you, I'm talking to you, they'll say, I'm having some problems right now teaching. And then when I start to ask them what's going on, they'll tell me that they're teaching different sequences. And I constantly am just gently kind of bringing up this idea of have you experimented with one signature sequence? And then I'll hear a whole bunch of reasons why. Oh, well, they wanted a lot of chaturangas and I wasn't doing that. And they gave me some feedback after class that that's what they want. Or, oh, I'm teaching in a studio and they've got this protocol that every week we change it or a particular theme or, oh, I felt like it was too easy or, oh, I cannot impress this upon you enough. All of that is noise. All of that is noise. Every time you give yourself an out to stick with your signature sequence, you will most likely feel the repercussions of that decision. And it most likely will not be to your benefit. If you want to become a confident teacher who can teach your sequence without notes and by walking around the room, doing what I call the walk and talk, you must stick with the same thing until you reach that point. 
and no amount of excuse or rationale or reason or scenario that you say is reason to stray from it. It's just the part of you that is saying, oh, change it because of this or change it because of that. And know that every time you do that, it comes with a consequence. And the consequence is most likely something negative, like you give in and change it and then feel nervous, give in and change it and then forget, give in and change it and feel badly that you gave in. So we need to start recognizing that there is nothing wrong <laughs> with teaching the same sequence over and over again. In fact, there's everything wonderful about it because you'll get better and better at it, which puts you in a better position to help your students. So until you are at a level where you can change things on the fly with no negative repercussions for you, don't change it. There is no reason to change it <clears throat> other than the reason in your head that your mind is telling you is reason to do. It. And I hear these sorts of things all the time. And I appreciate <clears throat> that the teachers that I'm talking to are saying these things and they've rationalized in their head why they're doing it. And so I'm not here to push anybody into a particular way of being. And I always say, and this is the God's honest truth, there is no right way to teach yoga. You can do it however you want. But when I talk to someone and they're not feeling confident and they also share how many times they're changing their sequence, there is a direct connection there. So know that if you want to be confident, if that's your highest priority, you must stick to the same sequence. I can talk about it through the lens of cognitive learning. As we learn something, we become at a level of knowledge and execution of the sequence, what's known as unconsciously competent. We don't even have to think about it. But every time you change it, you go back in this cognitive learning framework to a level of conscious incompetence. You know, right, that's the consciousness, you know what you don't know. That's the incompetence. So every time you go in the room with a new sequence, <clears throat> you work backwards in this learning paradigm to a state of being where you're not as competent. You want to get to the point where you can teach your sequence without even needing to think so hard about what comes next. Plus, from a marketing and branding perspective, your signature sequence is only yours. You're the only one teaching it. <clears throat> so people get to know you for that sequence. Now, does that mean that's your signature sequence for your whole life? Hell no. It simply means it's your signature sequence for as long as you wanna teach it. And then maybe you change it just a little bit and that becomes signature sequence too. That's the idea. <clears throat> okay, number three. Build your queuing strategy. <clears throat> now, in this episode, we don't have time to go over all that is in my methodology for queuing. Again, at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a way to peel back the onion on sequencing and queuing even more. So for this part of it, <clears throat> let me just say from a high level, a queuing strategy is totally different than a script totally different. And it will allow you to teach in a way that is so much more confident and empowered and authentic because you'll be teaching from what you know. Remember what I said before, when you teach from what you know, your confidence grows. So when you have a queuing strategy, you have a way to organize your thoughts and you have an approach to queuing, an approach to queuing. And I'll just peel back the onion a little bit on this. Action cues only is an amazingly powerful way to teach your class and a way in which you can leverage what you know so that you feel confident. It is a strategy for sharing cues. Now, notice I didn't say an anatomy-based cue, an alignment-based cue, or a somatic cue. I'm focusing you on teaching from action. This is the easiest place to begin <clears throat> and one of the most powerful ways to teach your class because the degree of accessibility of an action-based cue is super high. So 
everybody in your class is going to know what you mean when you say, reach your arms up. <clears throat> everybody in your class is going to know what you mean when you say, bring your feet together. Everybody in your class is going to know what you mean when you say, step your right foot forward. But as soon as we get into things like alignment and anatomy and artistic cueing, which is a little bit of a one-off, and somatic cues, we potentially start to lose people. And this is also where we potentially start to wade into the territory of using cues that we're just repeating, cues that we were quote unquote told to say, cues where we don't understand the why behind them. This is really amazing stuff I am throwing down for you. I really, I'm not tooting my own horn here. I'm just highlighting that this is what I mean about you don't need 500 hours. You need targeted strategies and solutions designed to help you be a more confident teacher. And this is what I'm giving you the highlights of. Okay, number four, learning anatomy. Now you may hear that and say, but Karen, you said step one was taking your 200 hour. I took my 200 hour and anatomy is part of that. Okay, I hear you. So if I show you a picture of 10 yoga poses, if I show you 10 pictures of 10 different yoga poses, can you name all the joint actions in those yoga poses, name the planes of movement of those joint actions, name the anatomical movements, name the muscles concentrically contracting to create those movements and share an anatomy-based cue for each pose for every muscle that's concentrically contracting, or even let's just say the top three. If you answered yes to all those questions, great, you understand anatomy. But if you didn't, you didn't learn it. And that's probably not even something about you. It's probably just that it wasn't presented well. And this is again, a very common thing. I talk about this a lot on every episode because I don't want you to think there's something wrong with you if you came out of your 200 hour and you don't understand anatomy. The bottom line is there's just not enough time in a 200 hour to give anatomy the focus it deserves. And every single 200 hour has a different person teach anatomy and they all have different levels of understanding and expertise with regard to anatomy. So I can only speak to myself. I know that I know anatomy. I know that I have a 10 step process to teach it. That's what I use in my program. And I get amazing results when yoga teachers take my program with respect to their knowledge of anatomy. So I'm not gonna go into this anymore. That's the bottom line. You must understand anatomy. And then the last thing is <clears throat> building an empowered mindset. This never gets talked about in training. And it is such an important part of being a confident yoga teacher. If you go in the room and you feel nervous and you hop on your mat to practice with them because you're too afraid to walk around the room and you feel self-conscious, that's not having an empowered mindset. If you go in and teach your class and before class, somebody says they have an injury and now you get all nervous that they're going to get hurt in your class and you completely hold back on the sequence you showed up to teach that you know well, by the way, that's not empowered teaching. If you drive home from your class and you beat yourself up for doing it wrong, that's not empowered teaching. Like I could give you so many other examples. Let's talk about what empowered yoga teaching is. Empowered yoga teaching and having an empowered mindset as a yoga teacher is loving teaching, is feeling like it is so easy to do, is feeling like there's very little transition for you from living your life to teaching your class. There's no, oh my God, I have to teach at five o'clock tonight. I'm so nervous. Oh my God, I've spent the past three days rehearsing my sequence a hundred times and now I have to go teach. There's none of that. It's just like, you got to teach tonight at seven o'clock and you go do it right? You walk around the room at the end of class when people are sitting in or when people are laying in Shavasana and you're looking out at your students, you have a peace in your heart. You know you did an amazing job. You know you built connection. You feel like you're in your dharma. You're sharing cues that you know. You're offering modifications and having conversations with students based on their questions about the poses and the alignment and the muscles. And you can help them. You can answer the questions because you understand anatomy. 
right? So this is what I'm talking about. This is what empowered yoga teaching look like, looks like. It means you're going in with the sequence you know, and you're not going to be swayed just because somebody is in the front of the room in the first couple of minutes of your class and they're obviously struggling. You're not going to freak out that you're going to hurt them because you know what you came prepared with is highly accessible. And you know that you understand anatomy and can work with the beginner and decrease the risk for them, right? So these are all specific examples of what it means to be an empowered yoga teacher. And to have that way of being, you need to have an empowered mindset. And there are many different key habits that I teach when I work with you that will help you break through some of these limiting beliefs that exist in the yoga world and also break through any limiting beliefs that you have about yourself. Every yoga teacher I've ever worked with has been triggered by something about teaching that brings up limiting beliefs that they had about themselves. Matter of fact, I just got an email the other day from someone who's been teaching yoga for a number of years. And she's still, I think in her words in the DM, she said, terrified, right? And this is not something for just younger teachers in their twenties and thirties. I'm talking to people who have raised families, who've had jobs, who have jobs, who've retired from jobs, who, whatever it is, they're high level people. And something about walking in the room to teach this thousands of years old practice just brings up these limiting beliefs. So again, I'm bringing this up as a topic because I know that you may be feeling this way. And if you're not feeling this way, I know that there are other teachers listening to this who do. And I'm here to, to some extent, normalize that this is a way of feeling, that there's something inherent in teaching yoga that brings this out in people. It brings limiting beliefs to the surface. So the way to move through that is to have an empowered mindset. And I have the habits that you can build that will help you not only recognize limiting beliefs, but work through them. So let's just review the easy recipe for competent teaching. Finish your 200 hour, create your signature sequence, build your queuing strategy, learn anatomy, and the last one is build an empowered mindset. <clears throat> okay, I've got three more in the six part framework. So number four is specifically about anatomy. And it's one of the foundational elements of my teaching methodology, the magic momentum method. And it's that anatomy is easy to learn when you have the step-by-step. -step. So in the six step process I just shared with you, anatomy and learning anatomy was one of them. And you may have said, oh, it's so hard for me to learn. Remember, the only reason you think anatomy is hard to learn is because no one's teaching it to you correctly. And I don't mean they're not giving you the facts correctly. It's that the format is the problem. The way most yoga teachers learn anatomy is the brain dump formula, where they sit through long lectures in their 200 hour, their mind goes blank, they're completely overwhelmed, they don't remember anything. And the only thing they do remember, they just resort to memorizing it. That does not work. <clears throat> Over the years, inside my program, I have a 10-step process for how I teach anatomy. And I actually have a mini course where I walk you through the 10 steps to give you a preview of that. And if you want to get the mini course, just go to my website, click on the courses link, and you'll see the mini course. It's $27. I think you're worth $27 to uncover what the step step-by-step -step is. But I want you to take away from this that all you need is the step-by-step -step to learn anatomy. It makes it so much easier to learn. So that's kind of the preview on that step. Number five, signature sequencing is the fastest way to confident teaching where you can do the walk and talk instead of the practice with me approach. I've already talked at length about that. So I'm not gonna go into that in more detail now. The thing that I want you to hear though, is that signature sequencing is the way, not 10 sequences, not a new sequence every Monday, not five journals on your desk filled with handwritten. None of that is the path to confident teaching. None of that. That's just all the mechanics of creating sequences. And then you have to be honest with yourself about, well, how's that working for you? Because if all of that stuff 
is part of your life. And the results that you get when you go in the room are the things I talked about before, the mind going blank syndrome, the need to practice in order to remember it, the feeling nervous, on and on and on, then it's not working. Why would you keep doing what's not working? So remember, signature sequencing is the fastest way to confident walk and talk teaching. And then number six, clear cues are shared with three qualities. And this is something you want to write down. Clear cues are shared with conviction, meaning belief. You know what the hell you're talking about. You're not just reading from a script. Clarity, meaning they are clear. Anyone can understand them regardless of their level with yoga, level of experience with yoga. And they build connection, meaning the student hears your cue and their body moves in unison with what you're saying to do. You can only know that you're building this connection if you're doing the walk and talk, because if you're practicing with them, you'll miss these nonverbal clues. You must be walking around so that you can see my cues are working. When you, when you say the cue, see what they do. When you say the cue, see what they do. I'm actually gonna make a note of that. When you say the cue, see what they do. It's easy to remember because it rhymes. And it's this nugget of amazingness that highlights that you've got to be able to see what they're doing so you know, are my cues even working? <laughs> and when you know they're working, that's where the feeling comes from that, oh my God, I'm building connection. That's where the feeling comes when you're sitting on your block at the end of class and watching them all in Shavasana and you have that feeling of peace in your heart like, man, I nailed this. I taught this class at such a high level and I feel great and I felt confident and I feel authentic and I feel like myself and I feel like I am doing something that I was designed to do in a way that I want to do it. So with that, <clears throat> that's the lesson. That's the six step plan for confident teaching. And so as I promised at the beginning of the show, I want to leave you with an action step to do. Okay. Number one, create your signature sequence. You may already have it. It's just going to take naming it as your signature sequence. Number two, use it in your next four classes. If you're willing to experiment with this, use it in your next four classes. And then number three, along the way, after each class, assess how you feel. How, do you, how did you feel teaching it in week one, week two, week three, week four? Did you remember it as you proceed? Are you getting better at remember it? Are, remembering it? Are you, are you using your notes less? Take some notes after every class because you won't remember and start to assess how the experiment is going. And let me know, send me a DM on Instagram, Bare Bones Yoga. So with that, we've come to the end of the show. I wanna leave you with a call to action. As I've been going through the step-by-step, -step, I've been talking about how obviously I'm just giving you the high level steps. Every single one of these steps that I shared with you, I go into all of the how-to if you were to work with me one-on-one -on -one in my program, the Yoga Anatomy Blueprint Learning Program. So if you're listening to this and you're jazzed up and you're energized and you're like, yes, this is exactly what I need. Just let me know on, uh, on Instagram, send me a DM, tell me you're ready to talk about how to enroll in my program and I'll tell you about it. As an interim step to get you started, Go to the link in my bio in my Instagram and get my ebook. Get my ebook. The ebook will give you a little bit more than I shared today, just for time purposes, and start you down the path to through the step by step. But if you're really ready to get results, 
you, you've got to just enroll in my program. It's so worth it. It will literally transform you. And again, just send me a DM on Instagram. We'll get on the phone. I'll tell you more about it. I'll find out more about you and we'll be ready to rock and roll. And one final thing, don't stop this episode right at this moment, because if you stay through to the end, you'll hear a special podcast listener enrollment offer in the outro that's tagged at the end of the show. So with that, that's the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll talk to you on the next episode of Conversations for Yoga Teachers. Namaste.